Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's six o'clock, so uh, we can start tonight's uh, planning meeting. I'm Councillor Pam Posnett, Chair of Planning. Members are reminded that we'll be using the audio visual system this evening, and the meeting will also be streamed live on YouTube. Please put your phone on to silent during the meeting. Members speaking, please raise your hand if you wish to speak and speak directly into the microphone in front of you. Remember to turn it off once you have finished. Members voting will be by raised hands. I will now provide a reminder of the evacuation procedure. In the event of having to evacuate the council chamber, please leave by one of the six emergency exits around the sides of the chamber. Please assemble at the far side of the front car park nearest to the park entrance. Officers will be on hand to assist anyone who needs any assistance. I would like to in introduce those present. The members here this evening in alphabetical order are Councillor Brown, Councillor Chandler is not, has not arrived yet. So uh, Councillor Douglas, Councillor Holmes, Councillor Illingworth, Councillor Pritchett, Councillor Smith, Councillor Steadman, Councillor Webster. Councillor Wood has sent his apologies. Um, so tonight we've got Councillor Evans, <laughs> who's um, standing in for him. We have a te team of officers present who are, to my left, the Assistant Director for Planning and Delivery, Jim Worley. To, our, to my right, our Planning Solicitor, Tom Pickwell. Joining us remotely is Plan Planning Officer Richard Redford. We also have our Democratic Services team present, assisting with the technology, and Adam Green is taking the minutes. To ensure we follow new COVID guidance, you will see that we have limited capacity this evening. Therefore, once the application you are interested in has been concluded, you may leave the meeting to allow other members of the public to enter the public gallery to listen to the application of interest to them. Thank you in advance for your cooperation in following the guidance. I've always already given the apologies for absence, which was Councillor Wood. Um, minutes of the meeting on the 9th of December 2021. Uh, to confirm the minutes of the meeting held on the 9th of December 2021. Are there any issues with the meeting? No. If somebody would like to pro propose it, Councillor Steadman's proposing it. Councillor Brown has seconded it. Thank you very much. Um, members to declare any interest is appropriate in respect of items to be considered this, meet this evening. Councillor Steadman. Thank you, Chair. I will be representing on um, the application for Stavern, uh, as you. usual. Thank you. Um, the application for Burton Lazars has been withdrawn, so we won't be hearing that tonight. So the first application is um, Field End 10, the Green Stavern. No. Councillor Chandler, Chandler uh, has just arrived. Traffic problems. Me. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you speak first. Yeah, you speak first, yeah. But and I'll hand over to Mr. Worley, who will start the proceedings. Thanks, Adam, if we can go, Sarah, Adam, if we can go to just the first. Uh, slide and then quickly on to the second. So um, obviously you've had the benefit of visiting this site um, on the edge of Stathen. Um, what we have before us tonight is a full application for three houses. Uh, in fact, can we go straight onto the next slide? Please, Adam, and I'll, I'll dwell on that for a moment. That's the layout of the site. Um, it would take the place, you'll have seen if, if you've been, uh, of a barn which is approximately in the location of the house on the bottom right of that slide uh, and a uh, I think it's probably 50s or 60s house style house um, which sits um, diagonally uh, 
on the site and uh, covers well, most of the left hand most plot and, and a bit uh, of the one in the middle. Um, it's surrounded, you'll have seen, by uh, countryside um, to the south and east, but uh, bolts onto the village uh, north and west. Um, sites partially in the conservation area. And the area, again, you'll have seen if you've visited, it comprises quite a broad mix of shapes, sizes and ages of dwellings, uh, pretty typical of uh, most of our villages. Um, those of you that have been with us for a while will know perfectly well <laughs> that there's uh, a history to this site. Uh, there was um, most probably most importantly, uh, a refusal and subsequently a successful, successful from our point of view anyway, uh, appeal um, for nine houses on, uh, I say this site, but um, it was a larger site than this. This is part of that wider site. And more recently, uh, through delegated powers, a refusal for um, three and two separate applications on more or less the same length and breadth of site, so five in effect. Uh, this is the applicant's response to those decisions. And it's for three. We consider that the removal of the... Uh, can we stay on the layer? I'll come on to that in a short while, Adam. Please, I need to point a few some things out. Um, we consider that the removal of the barn, well, we consider that the barn and indeed the house that I referred to offers very little to the character of the area. In fact, probably detracts from it because of their style and latterly their condition. And this development uh, would actually represent an enhancement in visual and architectural terms. Not that they are the only issues as well. Uh, plot one, which is the furthest right on this uh, plan being displayed at the moment, is proposed to mirror exactly those that it abuts uh, further to the right. Um, and plots two and three are bungalows, but incorporate a number of, sort of rural style design features. So if we can quickly flash on to the next slide, Adam, you'll be able to see what I'm trying to describe. So you can see the scale of the one on the right trying to blend in with that further to the right uh, and the two bungalows alongside it. So if you can go backwards, sorry about this, Adam, if you go backwards to the start of the wall, just to comment on parking. So going from uh, right to left, illogically, <laughs> but from right to left, um, the furthest right house is a three bedroom house. And you can see there, it's got four parking spaces dedicated to it, two in a garage and two outside. Um, the next one is a uh, two bedroom house and has two parking spaces, uh, as indeed does the one on the left. But those two open out onto a relatively spacious open drive. So um, we don't believe that those units would overspill into the narrow lanes nearby. Since we wrote the report, we've heard back from highways. Uh, they've commented that uh, they're happy with the parking provision um, and made the rather interesting comment that the accesses to the site, they don't consider to be particularly desirable uh, but given the low traffic nature of the road and the small scale of the development, they do not object to the application and do not recommend refusal. They've recommended a number of conditions, pretty standard fare for us about provision of parking, turning, surfacing, gates, things like that. Uh, they're all incorporated in the recommendation already because I think it's fair to say we knew they would be coming. We've also received a further letter of objection from the parish council uh, since this report was published. I know where the parish is speaking for itself shortly, so I'll be very brief. Um, they raise uh, concerns or, or reiterate concerns that are already listed in the report uh, about the age of the technical documents um, around um, flood, archaeology and wildlife. Um, and uh, that they relate to the wider site, the one that contained nine rather than directly uh, to uh, this proposal. Uh, I'll just comment on that in a short while after, after this short update. There's a further letter of objection that uh, is uh, post the report, and that questions the ability of the public sewerage system 
uh, in Southern to be able to take these schemes, uh, these houses. Um, it's probably worth me commenting on drainage at this point. We made sure that the position was understood because of the uh, old drainage report. This isn't proposing to follow what we were presented with, but that scheme of nine, which was a suds pond and uh, attenuation on all, all of that, uh, that that we see from time to time. This is proposing to uh, plug straight into the seven Trent sewers for both surface water and foul, and uh, applications uh, to that end have been made direct to the authority. Finally, if I can very quickly waltz through um, the next few slides, there's only a couple, thanks Adam. So that is it. So uh, I'm not gonna comment on this, but I've got a fair, I, I would put good money on that the question, question of the um, village envelope in the emerging neighbor plans gonna come up in debate. So just to let you know that that's there. So when references are made and you're trying to understand what people are describing, we can show that. And, and the next one finally, is, is my effort <laughs> at trying to superimpose the village envelope onto the site layout plan. So you can be uh, really quite clear about the extent to which it overshoots and, and the, that, that that projects outwards into the countryside. So again, uh, you know, there's, there's narrative about this in this report and uh, there's a fair, fair bit, it, it will be raised. So again, sometimes a picture's worth a thousand words, isn't it? Any questions for Jim, anybody? No? No? Fine. Thank you. Oh, wait with one. Got off lightly, yes. Um, it's now um, Councillor Cherry Underwood from Southern Parish Council, please, if you'd come to the table. Yes. Just a quick reminder, you have three minutes to speak and our solicitor will be timing you and about 10, 10 seconds before it's due to end or 30, we'll, we'll tell you. Um, if you switch, touch the face in the middle of the, it'll put the phone on for you. Thank you. Is that working? Everybody hear me? Thank you very much. Um, good evening. Thank you for your time tonight. Sadly, we're here again to discuss an inappropriate application for the Toffs Hill area. We're requesting that this committee respectfully refuse this application. Firstly, I'd like to draw your attention to the fact that this application relies on reports that relate to an earlier layout, not the one you see before you tonight. Whilst no concerns were apparently raised by consultees, surely any technical report must be clearly based on the application being considered, or how can you be expected to make diligent decisions? Again, the landscape virtual assessment quoted extensively in this report was not written for this layout, so cannot possibly be relevant. This site is on the edge of the village and partly within the conservation area and at the approach to the highly sensitive Toffs Hill escarpment. It contains, currently contains one building and a large shed. The proposed replacements are too large and overspill the site boundary. Plot three is some five meters beyond the current footprint and fails to meet policy H1 limit to development as in our local neighborhood plan. With over 12 years land supply and over 70 houses approved in the village already, do we need to be shoehorning another three in? This is what this ill-considered application creates, an overcrowded, overdeveloped privacy and light blocking development, which is in direct conflict to the open, well-dispersed conservation area it is linked to. It fails to meet policies EN6, and SS3. This development further does not meet policy C2 or any of the required housing demand for Melton Borough Council. Perhaps it would if it were two bungalows. A recent twin application for two and three bung dwellings was rejected and in part due to the cramped nature of the development. This application has three dwellings in the same space as the previous one and yet is not deemed to be cramped. It claims that plots two and three would be predominantly on the footprint of the existing building, not true. Plot two barely touches that footprint and plot three goes beyond, both covering significant areas of open field. It claims that views would still be evident despite the additional massing of building. Even within this report, it's described as potential glimpsed views over the roof line and between dwellings. This does not accord with policies EN1 and EN6 or with the aims of the neighborhood plan. 
It proposes to reduce the problem by digging into the rising landscape. No evidence is given of how this can be done safely. The potential for further and more dangerous land slippage in this area as a consequence of these proposed works is of grave concern to us. Thank you. Highway safety issues are also ignored. The exit from plots two and three is adjacent to Woodview paddocks, a development of five large dwellings with no footpath. The only pedestrian access is directly onto the road, already risky for pedestrians, forcing those with children and buggies into the route of oncoming traffic. To say parking is limited would be an understatement. There is no on-street parking, and plot two in this proposal has tandem parking, which is against design guidance and D1 of the local plan. Houses opposite have no off-street parking, so this area is always dangerously congested already. Overall, this is overdevelopment of the site and should be refused. A more appropriate proposal would Have you nearly be finished? Yes, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> if you can just remain there. Has anybody got any questions for Councillor Underwood? I heard something correctly, sorry, Jerry. Did you reference SS3 in probably about the middle of your speech? to go up that and that's so i don't know my way around your neighborhood plan like you do is that a reference to local plan ss3 yes sorry yes, yes. apologies Thank you. any other questions no well thank you very much thank you Edward. Uh, the next speaker should be helen broadhurst from vale planning consultants but unfortunately, she's notified as she's ill, so I will be reading out her presentation. Um, good evening and thank you for the opportunity to speak on behalf of the applicants. As you'll be aware, this application seeks consent for the demolition of two existing dwellings and a barn and their replacement with one three bedroom dwelling and two three bedroom bungalows. This scheme represents a significant shift compared to previous proposals on the wider landholding, with the proposed dwellings now replacing the existing built form within the site and not extending into the open countryside beyond. This pro proposal therefore represents a redevelopment of a brownfield site. <clears throat> In particular, we would stress that the new dwellings to replace the barn follows the pattern of development found along this side of the green with the new dwelling to be positioned along the same building line and with car parking provided to the side so as not to dominate within the street scene. The replacement of the existing two number dwellings replicates the existing built form and does not extend beyond the northern boundary of the existing development into the open grassland beyond. The new dwellings are also contained within the limits to development within the emergency Southern neighbourhood plan. The design scale and siting will reflect the pre-application discussions undertaken with your planning officers and in particular allows for a porous edge to the development and a scheme which is in keeping with the character of the area. The provision of three bed bungalows and dwellings will also meet a local housing need. There is no objection to this proposal from the Highway Authority or in respect of drainage. The previous findings of the planning inspector in respect of this matter remain relevant where he stated the underlying ground conditions have been established and that appropriate structural and drainage strategy could be achieved as such. Based on the evidence before me, I am satisfied that sufficient information has been provided and relevant conditions could be imposed. As you'll be aware, planning applications must be determined in accordance with an up-to-date development plan unless material considerations indicate otherwise. In this case, the site adjoins the service centre of Stavern and as such is subject to policies SS1 and SS2 of the Melton Local Plan, which gives support to small scale residential developments where they would represent sustainable development. The supporting text in the local plan states that for windfall sites, windfall sites, schemes of up to 10 dwellings may be appropriate within or on the edge of service centres, which this proposal accords with. Overall, we would stress that this scheme has been carefully developed to ensure that ecology and landscape value are respected and to provide a housing mix that meets local needs. The development delivers a high quality design approach, utilising a brownfield site and which respects the character of the village. There are also no outstanding objections in respect of highways or drainage. This revised proposal 
wholly accords with the provisions of the development plan and emerging neighbourhood plan and has been designed in full accordance with advice of planning officer pre-application stage. We trust therefore that you can support this application. Many thanks. And now I'd like to, I'd like to invite Councillor Steadman to approach the table, please. Ooh, glasses. Councillors Chair, two previous applications on this site have already been refused. I quote the inspector's most recent refusal. I conclude that the proposed development would adversely affect the character and appearance of the area. It would be contrary to policies SS1, SS2, EN1 and EN6 of the local plan which amongst other things requires new development to be sensitive to its landscape setting, respect the existing landscape character and features and contribute positively to the individual character of the settlement, including the setting of historic built forms and features. A small section of the site falls within the conservation area, which largely derives its significance from a loose knit development interspersed with green open spaces. The inspector goes on to say that the development wouldn't integrate with the edge of village location, nor preserve the character or appearance of the conservation area and would harm the setting. It would impinge on a protected view in the neighborhood plan. We now have two two bedroom bungalows, each with an office. So three beds really and a three bed two storey house, which is built close to the road and elevated, which would dominate the small cottage opposite, compromising their privacy from their bedrooms and living room windows. There is no identified need for three three bedroom houses in Stathen, and there is no substantive evidence as required under policy SS3 to justify three three bedroom properties. The parking on plot two is tandem with one space being the garage which goes against our supplementary planning document on acceptable parking. There will be three entrances on this sharp corner. To get the car out of the garage of plot two, you'd have to park the other car either on the road, blocking it, on the shared drive, blocking it, or on the private road to the estate next door. Not only does this represent bad design, it illustrates that the plots are restricted and the site as a whole is overdeveloped which again is not in keeping with the conservation area state status and represents bad design. This goes against local plan policies. I'm going to be careful here. SS1, SS2, SS3, D1, EN1, EN6 and EN13. And I'm going to quote the neighborhood plan policies as well. H2, which is windfall sites, H5, which is house design, ENV8, which is the protection of ridge and furrow, ENV9, which is important views and CFA4, Four, which is the protection of the Toffs Hill environment. Thank you. So spot on. Thank you very much, Councillor Steadman. Has anyone got any, qu uh, any questions for Councillor Steadman? No? Right, well, thank you very much. Right, well, we've heard the three speakers. Um, it's now open for debate. So if you'd like to start the debate, someone? Councillor Chandler. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, don't think I'm nitpicking here, but I dispute that it was ever a barn. We used to uh, get buy calves from the uh, person who had the land, and it was a shed. It was never a barn. It never had a manger in it. I went in that shed when it, it was a viable business, and it was never a barn. And I think, where do we the act says that barns must be and farm buildings must be preserved well this one doesn't even fall into any category as i see all right it, it's an eyesore and it needs to come down probably but it's not a barn and i think that should we, we should make that quite clear it never was a barn and it never will be a barn thank you councillor Ch chandler councillor illingworth thank you chair yeah my main um concern right now is the um, suggestion or statement that the reports are not relevant to this application 
and, and you know, a lot of the wording is, is if you like, extracted from previous applications. And um, um, I find that hard to, uh, uh, to understand why that should be the case. Perhaps, uh, Jim, you could um, confirm or otherwise that, because I think it's highly significant if the report isn't based on this application. Can't believe it isn't. Yeah, by all means. I mean, the reports were those prepared for the scheme of nine that we dealt with 12, whatever months ago it was. And basically they addressed the archaeology, the geology and the visual impact. I'll come back to drainage uh, of the site. And even uh, this site is part a subset of that larger uh, site of nine. And it basically gave them a clear bill of health in the author's opinion on all of those topics. So sort of by definition, if it's okay for nine, including this bit of the site, it's gonna be okay for three <laughs> um, uh, as a subset. Um, those things don't change as well. It's not like this, you know, the archeology span won't have changed in the 18 months that's passed, nor will the geology, nor will the viewpoints. So uh, they're valid, but they do need to be understood in context. Drainage um, did was a cause for concern for us. And uh, I've been on to the, uh, the agent, the lady that can come tonight today to ask where they fit in all of this. Uh, and she's explained it's there just for context. They have no uh, role in this application anymore because they're not proposing drainage strategies and attenuation. Uh, and uh, one of the plans shows a, a pond, um, but that's all associated with the previous application as well. As I mentioned at the beginning, the proposal now at the smaller scale of schemes is, is simply to plug into the mains. <laughs> Councillor Holmes. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, we were, um, you asked if we'd like to have a word um, to the planning officer. Um, and something has been sort of concerning me, several things about this application. But um, when you showed us uh, where the conservation area was, et cetera, or the little lines that you made, um, Mr. Worley, it seemed that uh, the two houses that they want to put there and, and our two houses was one house. I think, I think it was one house at one time, wasn't it? And it's made into two. Was that right? It, yeah, yeah. Um, well, if that was the case, did the house go out further because it's sort of cut across that house it's there uh, is it i you know I, I i just wonder about that plus uh, and i'll just finish we um uh, councillor chandler and i went to that site we've been to it several times now when the other houses were built we had the biggest job to turn around because there were cars there um and to have more more cars on a site like that that is so tight I, get, I bring it back to a long time ago in Scorford when we had somebody died because we couldn't get an ambulance to them and I always think we've got to think about these things it doesn't I know this is Stavon but we are we are putting a lot of cars into areas where sometimes it isn't safe um, but I just also would like to know about it's in the conservation area. Thank you. Councillor Brown. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, um, I'm going to cut to the chase as I usually do on these sorts of things. Um, it's just basically over development to me. Uh, we're squeezing three, three houses into a site that if I was designing this or given instructions to design it, you're looking at probably two maximum, uh, to be perfectly honest, uh, with that. So it's completely over. The other thing to me is, um, having sat in this committee for a while now and looking at the various applications that come up in Stadron, is there's no lack of supply of housing in Stadron. That's the other thing to, 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 bear, to bear in mind. There's also the various local plan policies that I believe it, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, this could be refused on. But when we look at stuff like the tandem parking, 
squeezing in there, you know, four, four spaces together. Then in plot two, we have two going against design. And it's all right saying, oh, something else was built up the road a few years ago, or this was put in, etc. We're looking at raising standards. We're looking at following the policies that we've actually written and agreed. And this goes against them. So therefore, I'm going to recommend we refuse this application based on SS1, SS2, SS3, D1, EN1, EN6, and EN13, and that we refer to the uh, neighbourhood plan, emerging neighbourhood plan, based upon, uh, I think Councillor Stedman made some, some points there as well. Uh, so basically, I think the need to go away needs to be a liaison with the Parish Council properly and come back with a less intensive uh, uh, development that's uh, going to cause less issues for, for what's already uh, an overstretched village of Stadon. And uh, that's so hopefully somebody will second me on that. Councillor Pritchard. Thank you, Chair. I will be seconding that, but first, uh, again, as Councillor Brown mentioned, tandem parking. We've been developing a design SP supplementary planning document here, uh, and, pla and Stathen neighbourhood plan are developing theirs. And it says here, this approach is not recommended and must be considered as a last resort. And that's taken from our document. Um, um, the, the second point I would make is that the lady from the parish council was not objecting to a reasonable size of development in the, in the suggestion. And I just want to take you while Mr. Wall has kindly put that up. I don't want to talk about the line of village boundaries, but I wanted to, to having been through all the papers and the um, case, I'll just read you something now from the Stathen um, uh, Developing Neighbourhood Plan, which is taken straight from our approved local plan, Appendix 1. Development of land continuous with or access from Toffs Hill, map points A to B, will only be considered in the light of the statement in Appendix 1 of the Melton Local Plan, which states, the village lies at the foot of the escarpment, which forms the Vale of Beaver. The existing pattern of development spreads up the lower parts of the slope. However, it would be inappropriate in landscape and development pattern terms to continue this pattern of development. And then it, what it doesn't quote from the local plan, the last sentence in our local, therefore sites on lower lying land are considered most appropriate for allocation. And I can't see any justification for going back further up the hill, whether you dig in or not. Uh, I'm, I'm willing to uh, uh, second Councillor Brown's proposal. Thank you, Councillor Pritchett. Do you want to say anything about that, Jim? and uh, one quite important, I think. So first thing, uh, is, it, this is reference to the village envelope, not the conservation area, and they're not the same. So it's quite an important distinction. Yeah, you're uh, right. You probably won't be able to pick this up because I can't anymore. But if you really squinted at that, you'd be able to see the footprint of the existing house that's now two houses marked by a dashed line. Thanks, Adam. That's a grand job. Uh, and you're quite right. Yeah, the village envelope. It's at an angle to the road. You'll have seen it when you went. The village envelope uses the angle of that house to, to delineate, delineate its boundary. And that's why you get this sort of strange zigzag shape, but that, that's its derivation. Um, in terms of the debate that's just been had, um, I have concerns about the inclusion of SS3 because it's not applicable to this site or indeed this village. So um, I would invite you to reconsider that particular point. SS3 is about rural settlements, just in the categories that the, the language that the local plan uses. Um, and I'm also concerned about um, a couple of aspects of the application of the neighbourhood plan policies. Firstly, um, is the point Council Pritchett made actually about extending further up Tofts Hill would be inappropriate, which is the essence of the Tofts Hill policy. Well, we're not extending further up Tofts Hill in this application. It's it's towards the bottom and it's replacing buildings uh, that's already there. And finally, I'm not certain whether, Councillor Brown, Councillor Pritchett, you were including the village envelope policy in the in the resolution. 
because uh, I'll, I'll, I don't have to comment then. <laughs> That's all right. Mm -hmm. Sue, there, you've got a line there, uh, Mr. Worley, and the plots go behind that. I mean, there is a, a hedge or a fence line behind the existing house, and you, what you're saying is that this development is going back a little bit further. Well, I'm saying you stick stick where you are don't go up the hill anymore that's what this policy is saying and what this people of Statham are saying don't go up the hill anymore you know so that i think i've made that quite clear there's a line yeah uh, as thank you I'm very there. much councillor appreciate you have it's oh sorry councillor brown just just come back and just uh listening to mr worry there thank you if if uh councillor pritchard's okay and i'll just reiterate what i was saying yeah i did make some comments SS1, SS2, I'll take SS3 out, yep. D1, EN1, EN6, and EN13, okay. Yep. So if you're okay with that, Don, yep. Yeah. Take that out and I'll leave, uh, take any comments, anything else I said out there were just comments, okay. Yep. Okay, fine. Thank you very much indeed. Right, it's been proposed for refusal and it's been seconded. Can I have a show of hands? of who's in favour of refusal. So that's unanimous. Thank you very much indeed. Madam Chairman, may I ask that if it comes back, we don't have a bin store on the front door. I think that's appalling in a residential area to want a bin store. Thank you. Right, Councillor Steadman will be returning to her seat. And we're now on to our next application, which is 21 slash 00056 slash full, Penman Spicer Community Hall, Park Lane, Melton Mowbray. So I believe it's um, Richard Redford who's taking this. Yeah, so if Richard would like to join us. <laughs> Hopefully you'll be able to see and hear me now, councillors. Well, not at the moment. We've still got... Um... Oh, yes, we've got the plan up. Sorry. Brilliant. Well, just hear look, me just right. look similar. Yes, I can hear you, but we've Brilliant. got the plan up. So, yes, thank you. Thank you. I'll start off by going through the, the slides. Now, the first slide that we have on screen shows the application site outlined in red and its surrounding sites. So you can see there the site accessed off Park Lane. So moving on to the next slide, um, this shows the existing ground layout uh, as it stands at the moment, um, as well as the elevations um, and a couple of sections through the building. Now the next slide shows the proposed ground floor layout on the left and the proposed first floor layout on the right. Now, by way of context, the first floor, if you, if you look at the ground floor um, and imagine it is a, almost a capital L, where the bottom part turns the corner, um, you'll be able to see in, an internal flight of stairs. Now, if you then look at the right-hand side, um, the set of stairs that you'll see also in that corner is what sits above that section, so by way of context. Uh, so you can see a number of units on the, on the ground floor and um, some on the first floor that's with, with one of those units uh, actually being split across two floors. Now the next slide shows the proposed uh, front elevation uh, and the final slide shows the proposed rear. Now, in terms of those front and rear elevations, you, you may be able to notice uh, changes in the external appearance um, as a result of extensions that form part of the proposal. So if we can go back to the um, site location plan at the, the beginning of my presentation, please. That's the one, thank you. Uh, so the main presentation, um, the application and the report in the agenda pack relate to the conversion of the existing building to provide um, a number of one and two bed apartments, um, as well as extensions and alterations to this building, which is set within uh, one of the conservation areas in the borough. 
the report as per is as per the main agenda. In addition to that, I would like to highlight the following. Um, we have from conversations with the case officer and the agent. Um, I would like to flag up that um, whilst we have plans relating to bin stalls, they are indicative at this point only, and the condition four of the proposed recommendation would cover the exact details of bins and cycles should permission be granted. Um, initial indications are that the bin store will be accessed only by going around the road, um, and that bins would have to be taken out to the road by the, 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 the occupiers of, of the proposed flats. Um, also advised by the agent um, that in respect of cycle storage and mobility scooter storage, they would be happy to have a pre-commencement condition attached to any approval should an approval be, be granted in order that we can ensure cycle storage, mobility scooter storage and mobility scooter charging can take place in association with the development. The agent has also confirmed that the apartments shown do, com do comply with the space standards that are contained within the local plan. Um, and also that the, uh, yeah, again, referring back to the, the, the bin storage details um, required by way of condition. The building itself is not listed, but as I've said, it is located within a, a conservation area. Now, the, with regards to the current use as a community facility, um, from dialogue with the agent, they've advised, and I'll quote here, um, what I've been given by the um, case officer who quoted what the agent has said, the current building has suffered in the pandemic and has lost the majority of its regular users. Also, other facilities in and around the town are more popular for community activities, meaning that the building rarely receives any requests from community groups, perhaps the occasional children's birthday party. Also, the building now is in desperate need of upgrade and repair, but due to lack of income um, and the falling levels of income, um, failing to be usable as a community building. The costs needed to be injected into the building no longer make it viable as a viable community building, hence other avenues being pursued. In addition to those, in addition to the main agenda, um, I would like to highlight that we have also received one additional letter of objection from a member of the public. Um, they make reference to the uh, a number of points that I'll, I'll summarise. They make reference to page seven of the design and access statement, where uh, they quote it's quoted that the loss of the the community hall will have little impact on the community, um, as well as um, having concerns with the statement that whilst the site is currently a community facility. The usage has decreased over the last few years. Um, these statements are disputed for a number of reasons, um, including the site previously having been used by a local brownie group um, uh, when the building was historically owned by Girl Guiding. Um, and following the sale of the, of the building, works to upgrade it weren't undertaken. So there's been a, a slow decline in the uh, building as a result of a lack of maintenance, um, which has in turn resulted in a lack of uh, reduction in the usage of the community hall um, as a result of not being well maintained. Also flagged up in the, in the objection that an exercise instructor was looking to hold classes at the community hall but due to the development plans decided not to, as they considered they would have to move elsewhere. Another instructor who held classes there decided not to renew the, the classes um, 
due to the possibility of the plan development and that these don't show, uh, this does not show that the community hall is not needed. Reference is also made to other gyms and leisure centres in the locality um, and highlights that they do not allow for individual instructors to book them nor hold their classes there. Um, and finally highlights that Melton needs more community hall space, not less, and that if the community hall was well maintained and hired out at affordable prices, it would be a very utilised hall. So that's the summary of the additional objection that has been received. Um, turning back to the main report, um, as I've already set out, all, all of the units proposed comply with the, open, uh, comply with the internal space standards. Um, and due to its location in the town centre, benefits from good access transport links, as well as good access to all the services residents require to, to live and work day to day. Um, as I've already indicated in respect of bins and cycle storage, as well as the um, mobility scooters, so you draw your attention to condition four for the bins and cycle storage, whilst the applicant would be prepared to have an additional condition respect relating to the, 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 the mobility scooters. With regards to comments raised in respect of the loss of such facilities, and I'd highlight that to my knowledge, this is the first application of, of this nature in the area. Um, Obviously, as members are most likely aware, and they, the, each application is dealt with on its own basis. So what may be circulating, be it through whispers in the wind or everything, we don't have any other formal applications in for similar proposals at other community halls in the Melton Town area. Um, Officers, for the reasons set out in the in the main agenda report, consider that the proposal is acceptable and is therefore recommended for approval subject to the conditions set out with the option for additional ones should members be minded to approve. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you very much. Anybody got any questions for Richard? Councillor Chandler? Um, I note that the case officer didn't refer to 431, 432 and 433, where the, our environmental health department have been active on this application because of acoustics and noise, et cetera, et cetera. If we pass this application, can I have an assurance that these flats, apartments, whatever you want to call them, and I mean, they are much needed. I know one, two bedroomed, would they meet the decent home standard? Through you, Chair. Um, obviously, as I've said, the floor space meets the required levels. With regards to insulation and acoustics, um, I draw your attention to condition six of the um, recommendation, which requires a scheme of, for insulating the building in respect of noise and vibration be provided to ensure that the amenities of the proposed occupiers as well as surrounding residents are protected to environmental health requirements. Does that answer your question? Well, if I may come back, Madam Chairman, now we, uh, you can have anybody as for, for building control. You don't have to use the council anymore. What, have we assurances that the, these standards will be met? Because I know a lot of people are very dubious about outside building control people coming in and do we get the right to, do people get the right advice and are the policies always adhered to i think this is you know it, this is a big uh, problem with this i mean there's nothing worse i've never lived in a multiple application place or even a semi-detached so I, I don't know about banging pipes and things but i've told that they can be absolutely devastating if you get air in pipes banging around so I would like some assurances before I make a decision on this, that this is all in order. Um, if I may, through you, through you Chair, um, in order for the development to commence, they will have had to have, the applicant or whoever implements any permission, will have had to have submit the information to discharge this condition. 
Now, that information will be put before our environmental health um, colleagues to make sure that it meets the standards uh, and that, assuming it does, um, that will be discharged, but will, will be discharged with the caveat that they have to implement the development in accordance with those schemes and thus retain it thereafter, which means that should an issue come up subsequently, um, they, the, the, there would be the ability to look at enforcement action should an enforcement query be raised with regards to noise and disturbance under the provisions of, of this condition. Hopefully that will allay some of your concerns. Uh, thank you, Richard. Any more questions? Councillor Steadman. I think Councillor Brown was first, actually. Thank you. Was he not? I must be quick. Um, just one question. I went to look at this again yesterday, and I note, well, I went around the back, actually, and I note there is um, quite a tall brick wall at the back of this building. Um, do the applicants actually own that brick wall, or is it owned by somebody else? Because someone's going to have a really nice view of a brick wall from one of those flats. The honest answer, Councillor, is I don't know. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and try and fob you and the rest of the committee off. My honest answer sitting here now is I don't know. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Brown. Yeah, uh, Mr Redford. Um, in 4.11, uh, you go a great length and you've also commented that you say that uh, provision for uh, uh, leisure and health activities uh, could be obtained by the public at Springfield Street and the Cove and Melton Space. I yesterday had a meeting with the direct with the assistant chief executive, asking me what my views were on closing the Cove and Springfield Street, and they're no longer open to the public to book out. So we here have a point being made in the application directing us to make a decision based upon these facilities being available when one, they're currently not available and there has to be a consultation to take place with members. And secondly, they actually might be lost to the community. Now, I'll not go into the details of my views on that, but I am very uncomfortable that we have this statement in a paper directing members to make a decision. Could you clarify who, which officers in this council said that these facilities were open and will remain open, please. Through you, Chair, um, that statement is, I believe, taken from the submitted documents by, by, by the applicant, by the agent, as opposed to an officer, per se, of this council saying they're available. That's my understanding. Uh, Mr. Worley, may I ask to see if you're aware of anything as well? Yeah, I will. Thanks, especially. We're, you're, not, you're not the clearest in this room, to be honest, Richard, as well. So I was struggling. <laughs> yeah, it, it, exactly. I'm, I'm pleased, Richard, bit the point up. Um, this isn't our officers saying that. Uh, if I go right into the heart of um, 111, is it, or 211? 411. <laughs> so it says, it says the agent stated that the wide area that there is a mix of commercial resident properties and so on and so on and references the cove. Um, the come back and to, to the uh, leisure centre and, and the other facilities. The, the come, back, come back and this is we, we own and run those facilities. Do we not check those statements before we actually publish them? I think it's a fair summary of what the agent has put forward. I'm not, you know, it doesn't then say he's right or he's wrong, or it's for us to consider it in the round alongside the other issues. And that's not the way it's been portrayed, and the way that it's been put across by the officer tonight is that there are these alternative facilities. I'm putting on the record, they're not there at the moment. Okay, for the rest of the committee. Can I just say, I, I do have a lot of sympathy with what Councillor Brown's just said because we've been making a decision when we haven't got that correct information. And if Councillor Brown hadn't been attending tonight, we wouldn't have known what he's just told us. So that's the only comment I'd like to make. 
Thank you very much for raising that, uh, Councillor Brown. Uh, and I fully agree that we should have checked that uh, and validated it. Um, I've got a question um, for you, uh, Richard. There just seems to me, and you, 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 yourself and Mr. Wally might clarify that, this, there seems to be something missing from here uh, in terms of place manager and a sense of place. We've actually got a conservation area. We have a conservation officer. This is a, a, a sort of place where this is a sort of application in a location where I would expect quite a bit of attention because of heritage, the use of the town by townspeople. It's important to visitors, the, the heritage, the economy uh, and the site of bins, you know, from, uh, and crime. Um, there's something that, that seems to be missing in this. If you've got a, a comment, please. Councillor Holmes. Thank you, Madam Chairman. In the light of, of what, of, uh, what Councillor Brown has said, and I have been concerned about this because I note here that it says that, you know, these various only children's parties and things like that, we're very often crying out for buildings like this. I don't know how substantial, it looks pretty substantial, I don't know how substantial it is. Um, and so I am concerned about it. Qu can we, Madam Chairman, go any further with this when we haven't got state when we haven't got the right statements? Um, I would like to have seen it deferred and, and come back again with everything in place. For instance, as you say, Richard, you don't know who who the wall belongs to the other side, all these sort of things surely we ought to know about before we can make a proper judgment. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Councillor Holmes, if I can just come in there. Um, I think you're talking about maybe moving to defer the application. Um, at the moment, we're just doing questions for the officer. The speakers will still need to speak and have their questions and then in debate at that point there. If you want to move a motion like that, you could do it at that point there, but not at this moment. Thank you. Any more questions for Richard? No, well, thank you very much, Richard. Um, I'd now like to call to the table Laura McCullen, who's from Haywood McCullens, uh, and she's the agent. If you'd like to come to the table in the middle. You have uh, three minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for the time this evening. As you know, this application is for the conversion of the existing permanent spice building into five apartments. There'll be one studio, three one-bedroom apartments and two, two, one two-bed apartment. An initial pre-application advice application was submitted, which supported the conversion of the property into apartments. A full application was subsequently submitted and we have worked with the local authority over the last year to ensure we have created a scheme that preserves the building and creates a well-designed apartment scheme suitable for a town centre location. Working with an existing building presents certain challenges. However, we have worked with the environmental health officer to ensure adequate acoustic measures are designed into the layouts to reduce noise transmission between apartments and to the outside of the building. This will ensure there's no loss of meaning to the residents. The section of the acoustic details is shown on um, drawing PA 103, which forms part of the application. We recently submitted revised plans to the local authority, demonstrating that the bin storage can be accommodated to the front and rear of the building, which would enable residents not to have to go around the whole back of the building to get the bins. In addition, there is also two cycle spaces noted to the rear of the building and a charging point. As the building is located in the town centre, there is no requirement from highways for vehicle parking. All of the apartments meet the criteria for the national space standards and all the areas for each of the apartments can be found on the ground floor plan drawing. The report mentions that an additional story is to be added to the building, but this information is based on a previous version of the plans originally submitted. I can confirm that to the rear of the building, the smaller gable section of the roof is to be lifted to accommodate apartment five. However, the remainder of the building is a pure conversion in its current form. A first floor has been added inside the volume of the main hall, but nothing has been extended or increased to the main hall. There have been some concerns raised over the increase in noise. However, the building has been previously used for parties and exercise classes, which would produce significant volume of noise in contrast to five separate apartments. 
These activities would have also generally occurred in the evenings and weekends when residents will be at home, therefore a quieter use will be more than welcomed by local residential properties. The building currently <coughs> needs a significant lot of renovation works in order to keep operating. However, the use of the hall has significantly decreased in the past few years, meaning that the clients have had to look at other options in order to preserve the building. Without a regular client base, the building just isn't viable as a community building. There are numerous other community facilities in the area which are in competition and present much newer and up-to-date facilities, meaning the Penman Spicer building have less and less inquiries and regular clients have all but dried up. I'd like to note that we didn't submit the, the list of buildings that were submitted by the, the um, planning officer with regards to the cove. That hasn't been come from us or the client. In conclusion, we believe the loss of the building as a community facility will have a small impact on the local community and the introduction of smaller units would have a much greater benefit. Thank you. Just remain there, just to see if anybody's got any questions for you. Councillor Brown. Can I just clarify what I heard? Did you say that the planning officers put those buildings in, it wasn't you? Can I ask for a response to the planning officers, please? Do you want me to clarify further? I've been told, but I don't, I've not. I'm not uh, saying you, but there's somebody in this council has said something. Uh, could you just uh, uh, go and uh, expand on that, please? We asked the question, the chair raised questions about um, members that had asked questions about the viability of other, other buildings. Um, and we just simply responded with a statement to say, we believe that other um, local facilities are available in contrast to Pem and Spicer. We didn't provide a list of other um, buildings that are available. Happy to do that if that's required. Fine, thank you very much. Um, Councillor Steadman, I believe you've got a question. Yes, sorry, perhaps you could answer who owns the wall at the back. <laughs> that would be, be removing Putney Landscapes as part of the scheme. Brilliant. And could I ask also, who's your target audience for these flats? Do you have a target audience for them at all? Um, it would be the start of the, the sort of smaller home start of homes. Sorry, any other questions? No? Right, well, thank you very much indeed. If you'd like to take your seat now. Uh, I'd now like to call Councillor Chris Fisher to the table. Welcome, Councillor Fisher. Thank you, Madam Chair and Councillors. I'm here this evening to represent on behalf of my constituents what you see before you is the bare minimum in standards it is also the bare minimum space for a bed sit. In addition to this, the bin storage and access has been pieced together in an attempt to satisfy basic design requirements. It is against regulations to store wheelie bins inside a building, so now we have a porch arrangement. The revised bin store now puts the wheelie bins for flats one, two and five inside a porch leading to Park Lane. As you know, wheelie bins are a known fire hazard and here we have three sat at the only point of access and egress for three flats. I do not consider this to be a good design. The wheelie bins are currently emptied every two weeks, but at present there is a consultation taking place that could see this extended to a three weekly collection. Can you imagine the smell from rotting food and personal hygiene products in these bins in warm weather, let alone the maggots and vermins it will attract? Where are they going to put their recyclable waste and store it for two weeks? As this now is now an open porch area, you may well get people relieving themselves late at night in this area or teenagers who think it's a good idea to set fire to the bins. Not very secure, is it? Flats three and four around the back have cycle storage, but there's no cycle storage for the other three flats, nor is there room to store mobility scooters for the elderly, those who might find a town centre flat attractive. The bins for flats three and floor four will need to be dragged 37 metres to the main road above the distance recommended by the LCC design guide. Where are they going to put them on a bin day? In front of somebody else's house on their property or on the pavement of Leicester Street, blocking the town centre's paths? Flat two has no downstairs windows, only a light well to bring in some natural light. This will offer little comfort during a lockdown, having no view in a flat that meets the minimum space standard required. Our Melton community is going to grow by 6,000 houses, and here we are converting a community space in the middle of the town with what appears to be no documentary evidence that there is no realistic prospect of the premises being reused or repurposed as a community facility. Other venues have been suggested as alternatives, but again, there is no guarantee of their continued use either. 
As the town grows, we will need more community spaces, not fewer. And once lost, it is highly unlikely we'll be building, uh, we'll build more, particularly so centrally located and accessible. Other community centres have been mentioned in this application, such as the Cove or Springfield Street. Neither of those, though, are in the town centre location. And as far as I'm aware, as Councillor Brown says, Springfield Street Community Centre is no longer open. This overdeveloped site will not only impact the heritage assets in nestles amongst in historic core of Melton, policy EN13, but it will also overlook neighbouring residential properties, both on Park Lane and Fox Yard, intruding on their privacy. This proposal represents overdevelopment of the plot, meeting minimum standards, impacting heritage assets and the amenities of neighbours and represents bad design and I ask you to refuse it on policy D1. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Councillor Fisher. Just remain there and see if any members have got any questions for you. Anybody got any questions for Councillor Fisher? No? No? Fine. Well, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Right then, members, we've heard the speakers. We're open to debate. Councillor Smedley? Smith? <laughs> um, sorry, did we want to go to Councillor Brown first? Yeah, um, Mr. Wall is ready to answer Councillor Brown's. Sure. Um, if I can ask you to have the paragraph we were looking at before in mind or in front of you, 411. And while you've got that, I will read from the application submission, which I've uh, got up here, which says the wider site is a mix of commercial and residential properties. And whilst the site is currently a community facility, the hall has decreased usage over the past few years. There are several other community facilities in the central Melton area, providing similar or superior facilities to the local community, including the community centre at Springfield Street, the Cove Children's and Community Centre and Melton Space. Penman Spice have a history of hosting exercise classes. However, the town also has uh, the Leisure, Waterfield Leisure Centre and several gyms of various sizes. And a few more words beyond, but no more names mentioned. Uh, with that, thank you, uh, Jim, for that. Uh, obviously, the, the developers put that statement in. Um, it's an incorrect statement because we know Springfield Street and the Cove are no longer open at this moment in time and they're at risk of shutting. And also, on Waterfield Leisure Centre, there's a big review going on there and we've had problems there with the structure and the condition of it. So what I would say is that I don't think we should regard that as we make that decision, uh, our decisions tonight, because that is incorrect. Councillor Smith. I am happy to um, allow Councillor Pritchett to go first if he's got something pressing. Councillor Pritchett? Yeah, the fault is not the applicant. The fault is ours for not validating it. The applicant may have made that statement in good faith. We should have validated it as you pointed out, Councillor Brown. Councillor Smith at last. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I have a few things I'd like to say, actually. Um, I think personally that we should be looking to improve community centres and community assets and provide more space for leisure and activities for young people and young families. Um, COVID has actually increased people's desire to want to spend more time with their communities so this would just be a horrific loss when we should be encouraging that kind of community cohesion and the coming together of you know our um our residents um i actually have a lot to say on 4.1.1 um of course activity and use has decreased over the last few years i mean you know we've been in lockdown and had reduced um, socializing over the past two years alone. And, um, you know, I have so many fond memories as a child of having birthday parties and just little get togethers with friends at Penman Spicer. And I think back then that there was a bit more sort of advertising in the paper and that kind of thing going on. And I think, you know, if we, if we give it time and once we're out of the pandemic, we could see something like that happening again. Um, our young people need somewhere to go and they need something to do. So uh, if we're going to repurpose Penman Spicer, it should be with that in mind, not, you know, squashed housing for the poor people that would end up living there. Um, 
I know several people have already mentioned this, but um, the community centres that are mentioned aren't in the town centre anyway. So they're not accessible for the people, say on my end of town, out in Edgerton and Sisonby. I know Edgerton supposedly has the, um, the cove, but the, the, uh, the use of that was being restricted more and more. And I just think something like this in the town centre, it's a reasonable size, it is, because I know we used to play the parachute game in there. Um, it, it's perfect for some kind of children's activities or something. At the minute, young children have only got jungle books, and once you reach the age of five, it's no fun, really. So, you know, um, we, should be, we should be improving it and developing it, not getting rid of it and sticking five tiny flats in there. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Councillor Steadman. Thank you, Chair. I agree completely with what you've just said. Um, I also have concerns around um, the wheelie bins. <laughs> because when we, we, we first looked at this, the wheelie bins were around the back. Now we have three wheelie bins off um, Park Lane. Um, and as Councillor Fisher said, this is now an open door, so people are going to be going in there, setting fire. We know the children of Milton like setting fire to wheelie bins anyway down in the park, so here we are. Um, I find that dangerous, and I'm very concerned about having a condition to sort this out. Um, I noticed that the latest iteration of, of, of the wheelie bins also provides two cycle spaces around the back. Really, you want at least five and you need three of those around the front because that's where the access is. That's going to take more room from the flats. I think, I think it's completely represents yet again, overdevelopment of the site. I'm very concerned, as you say, about the community. Um, most of the development in our local planet is going into Melton. We are going to need these community spaces. I am very surprised that we don't have a policy C7 for the town center because this is where most of the growth is going. Um, I will listen to the rest of the debate if I'm here. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Steadman. Councillor Holmes. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, when I said about deferring this, um, because we have got what obviously isn't right here, um, I, I do wonder really how much further we can go on. But, I, but I, I, I'm very interested in what Councillor Smith has said but I'm looking at it from the other angle for the elderly people, because quite honestly, um, there are lots of, of uh, little clubs and things like that that do have a job to find anywhere. Um, and uh, from both ends of the scale and for everybody, I always I've been to that hall and I thought it, it was always a pretty good little hall. Wasn't there, weren't the scouts there at one time or something? But they were, weren't they? Yeah, they were. Yeah, I knew they were because we nearly bought a tent from there for the young farmers. Um, and uh, but I did. I just wonder if we ought to have deferred it because we have got things wrong in here. I, I I don't know what other people think about this. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Smedley wanted to. I can't. I can't get used to Smith. Sorry. It's okay. Don't worry. Um, yeah, sorry, I, I wasn't trying to exclude anyone when I was talking about what we should, um, I just obviously have an interest. Um, and also, sorry, I know I've already finished my piece, but if we want to look at flats for um, young people, the elderly, we should really be looking at the kind of layout of Chapel Street. I used to live there for a few years and, you know, there were issues with mold and stuff and there's no lifts in there but that is the kind of thing spacious open flats you know not cramped crowded slums thank you councillor smith uh, councillor douglas thank you chair um yes um listen to um everybody's uh, kind of support of um keeping this as a community uh for community use um, I'm very much concerned about the dilap dilapidated condition of uh, this building. I remember uh, attending exercise classes in there in 2008, and my friend said, it's all I could get. Um, it's a little bit run down, and we're like many years later, and it's still very, very, very much run down in my, in my opinion. So if we kind of keep it as community use, when are we ever going to see it actually improved, um, refurbished, 
and, and looked after lovingly because it's a, a immense historical value. Um, I, th there are other residential properties in the areas and flats, uh, so it would fit in quite well. Unlike in my ward, we lost um, the Foresters Hall down Rosebury Avenue. It was in a very, very old shed. It had been used by the community for lots of clubs. Eventually it was down to just the boxing club usage. Um, and in the end, it was actually falling down. So we lost that to um, a domestic uh, property. It's, it's in the process of being built. There are problems around that actually. But um, so I'd love to see it kept as a community centre, but it is so sorely kept it I wouldn't want to hire it out for anything really with greatest respect so if we don't kind of con consider converting it to domestic use um are the owners going to refurbish it and personally I don't think so because they haven't done so for many 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 years anyway um I'm I'm open-minded I'm just going to listen to the debate I'm and I'm undecided at the moment thank you thank you Councillor Douglas Councillor Lingworth Thank you, Chair. Yes. Um, sadly, the usage of, of that building has been in decline for more than a couple of years. Um, I have the added insight of having lived on a flat in, in a flat on Park Lane uh, some years ago. Um, and there was certainly never any um, uh, never any uh, over usage uh, evident but yes children's parties and things were great I see it from both sides I see the need for town centre flats having needed one myself once and um, but I just can't help but feel that this is just too many five on on that on that side um, we were we were slightly hesitant about the former public convenience building at, <laughs> at two weren't we I think or, 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 or whatever but I just think there's there's inconsistency with this with, with, with this one um, and the real but the reality is that if it housing the chances of any money being invested in it to continue as a community facility are not good, but that doesn't mean we should admit defeat and say, oh yeah, it's not viable. Um, maybe we need to look into how it, how it could be made viable. Um, but I'm inclined to not support simply on the scale of the development, five on, on there, um, reference has been made to only two cycle uh, sites and, and yeah quite right if, if if people are going to live in the town center they are and and, and not be motorists they get, they may well want that and the, and the wheelie bin issue i don't think is 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 satisfactory at all um, um i share those concerns so um i'm more mindful to support a refusal or a deferral um even though i acknowledge the need for town center Flats. Yes. Okay. So, Thank are you, you proposing refusal or deferral? I need one of them. I hadn't intended, but um, okay. But I have got other I, people waiting to speak. If so. other people are waiting yeah. to speak, yeah. Okay. Councillor Brown. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, taking on board everything, and sorry, I didn't want to sidetrack everybody on to just the community aspect of things, but that's just one part of the debate here tonight. The other part of the debate is around, and we keep referring to minimum standards, etc. Um, I, you know, working in the housing sector, I am sick of hearing about minimum standards. We should be looking to raise the bar, and that's what our design policy does, etc. And we do need uh, the housing, etc. This application, I don't know what pre-application advice has happened. I don't know what discussions have happened, but it's not really fit for purpose in my view to take this to the committee to, to tonight but saying that it's here and we need to make a decision and um you have to make a decision one way or another uh with the way we go but let's look at the at the development it's five flats squeezed in together poorly designed in my view we bring into the, the lessons that we should be learning from covid around space etc the lessons we should be learning from the grenfell disaster etc 
uh, the lessons we should be learning from the discussions that we all have around the experiences that we've experienced through through uh, uh, the last number of years. Um, and obviously we've got the community facilities. I think the developer, you know, there may not be a business case to, to use this as a community centre. Uh, it may have deteriorated, but we have this pressure and we're not looking at things holistically. But I think the developer and the planners need to go away and sit down and come up with something that's of a a much better design and fits in with the heritage, heritage, et cetera, and addresses stuff. You know, there's comments about, will condition scooters, will condition this. Well, there's regulations that need to be overcome on that. There's, there's the fire officer's regulations around uh, the scooters and, and, and bins, et cetera. Uh, and I'm not putting fault at anybody, but sometimes we rush things. And when you rush things, you make mistakes. Yeah. So let's sit, sit back and get it right. But in that reason, I'm going to propose that we refuse this application, basically, on D1 and EN13. E, e uh, um, and I'm going to look for a second, though, please. I'll be pleased to second that one, Councillor Brown. Councillor Brown has proposed, Councillor Pritchard has seconded refusal. So can I have a show of hands, please? That is a unanimous decision. Thank you very much. There is no urgent business tonight, so I'd like to thank you all for your attendance, and we've had some good discussions this evening on both applications. Tom? Sorry, just one quick point. Um, the invites for the training should have all gone out now, so if you've not had a chance to respond, if you can respond to Democratic Services just so they can uh, see who's actually coming, that'd be great. Thank you.